everyone. Welcome to another edition of Sprint. My name is Sharif al -Tuni, and in this edition, we'll be having an interesting topic all about tennis. We'll be joined with the African champion for tennis and also ranked number 13 uh, for the ITF uh, in uh, under 18 years. And definitely is going to be uh, a roundup also about the latest with, te with tennis and uh, will be joining us uh, tennis experts to be telling me us more about this experience in Egypt and the achievement by Sandra Samir. Let's move on now for a short break and returning back for more. Welcome back, you're still watching Sprint. And at the beginning, let's move to this story and we're returning back with our interview and the exclusive interview with Sandra Samir, who is the African champion. Well, number two, Novak Djokovic rallied to beat Roger Federer in a three-set thriller on Sunday for the Indian Wells ATP Masters title. Djokovic defeated Federer 6-3, 6-3, 7-6 and 7-3 to capture the third title in the California desert to go with those he won in 2008 and 2011. In the 33rd career meeting between the tennis heavyweights, Djokovic avenged the loss to the 17-time Grand Slam champion Federer in the semi-finals last month at Dubai. Federer earned the first title in nine months in Dubai and will be rising from eighth to fifth in the world on the strength of reaching the Indian Wells final. Trailing in the final set after dropping his serve in the third game, Federer finally clawed back the break in the 10th game to not the set. From there, they went to a tiebreaker that was all Djokovic. Federer sent a backhand long on the first point of the breaker, and Djokovic seized a quick three-love lead with an overhead smash off a weak Federer lob and another errant backhand from the Swiss. Federer saved one match point with an ace, but Djokovic ended it on his first opportunity on his own serve when Federer smacked a backhand into the net. It was a very even match. Um, one break was enough for him to win the first. It was uh, exactly the same for me in the second. And um, as I said bef uh, before the match <coughs> today, uh, very few points will decide a winner, and that's what happened. Uh, Roger is playing on a very high level. Uh, he's ha he has more depth on his shots, especially from the backhand side. He's opening with uh, with his backhand shot down the line. Uh, he gives himself an opportunity to finish with the forehand. He serves well, and he just plays much better than he did in last uh, you know 13, 14 months. And um, you know I needed to 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 really be on the top of my game and very concentrated till the last moment in order to win and that's that's what I've done I'm very proud of uh, uh, my achievements during this tournament I've uh, played three four matches in three sets a couple of matches had to come uh, from a set down and uh, mentally this definitely helps for my confidence 
you know, he put in a lot of hard work and uh, walking away without the trophy and being a few points from victory is is tough, but it's how it is, you know. Um, I've been on that side, uh, you know, many times, but I've also, I've, thankfully, I've been on the winner's side more often, so maybe that softens the blow a little bit. Um, but like you say, if you see the angle that last year was difficult, especially this time around last year in Indian Wells, that I am able to turn it all around now and they're really playing nice tennis, you know, that's also what I said out on the court, and I, I truly believe that I'm playing good tennis, and then it's maybe sometimes a little easier to lose this way, because I really did did believe it's playing um, good tennis, um, it was a solid match, you know, it was good also movement-wise, my serve was around, um, you know, it was a overall good performance, so I'm, I'm actually very happy with the tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2014 BMP Paribas Open champion, Novak Djokovic. Welcome back, you're still watching Sprint. I have the pleasure to introduce my guest uh, for today's edition. I'd like to thank you very much, Sandra Samir, for joining us. Thank you. Hi. It's a great pleasure to have you. It's a great achievement that you have already done. You're 16 years old. You have reached to become 13, ranked 13 in the ITF, and you have higher aspirations. So at the beginning, if you can tell us about your, uh, to start with the dream and the goals that you're having in your mind. Um, for me, my goal is uh, now is, um, uh, for sure, it's like the goal for every like tennis player is to be top ten for sure, like WTA professionals. But uh, for me, my goal now now is uh, to be in top five, top five or top three in the ITF, and and start playing WTA and professional tennis player, so mm -hmm. I can achieve achieve more. And uh, for the big goal, you know, the, there's the the big dream is uh, to be in top ten. Yes, this is great. So, and the, the unusual thing is that uh, an, an Egyptian uh, tennis player uh, who's is trying to, is struggling and trying to move ahead with the professional game, and uh, you've already played one uh, WTA, and if you can get, give us at the beginning your experience with the WTA. Um, I, played, I played only once before, and um, I went to the round of 16. And it was, uh, for me, it was, it was a great experience. I I got um, I kn I knew where I've, like I am like okay I have to work on that 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 so I can I can go like come back here next year or come back here in like six months and I'll be doing achieving more. Yes. So it, it like it got me it was like the 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 stop you know the stop sign so you have to stop and like reload. So I um, I actually it helped me a lot because after that tournament I started like practicing and getting like and changing my game and helping mm. my my game more and um, yeah for me it was it was great so let's start from this you know long journey so you started the playing uh, the tennis game since you were five years old yeah and it has been 11 years you still have the road ahead of you so if you can explain to us or tell us a little bit about the journey because it's definitely a tough journey to reach this to the stage yeah for sure it's um, you know when you're like a kid uh, uh, taking a lot of like you, you kids like like candies and like for me it was um, there was no time for candy you know yes <laughs> no time for like going out hanging out with friends it's always training it was n well, not always training but you only get one day a week to rest like and yeah. y y trust me if you have only one day a week to rest you, you don't rest. You, you, you won't yeah. rest you're not gonna go out you're not gonna run around you're not gonna do anything you're just yes. gonna rest uh, so it, it was it was tough, but um, for me, yani, thinking about it, you yani, you get from like 
you're five, you, you lose a lot of stuff. You don't have like what every child have. So you, you think about it now and like you remember. And yeah, you, you, like, you lost a lot of things, but you gained it now. Like you have it now. Like you have, I now I have, I have ton of friends. Okay, most of them don't actually like know me, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> I mean, barely, know you. Bar barely know barely you. see you. Yeah, yeah, but um, I don't have friends that love me. Mm -hmm. And um, I got like, you know, I, I took what I, I lost. Like now yeah. I have what I lost when I was but a you kid. Don't, you don't regret like, you, you I don't have a gap that you uh, no. really miss in this journey. I never regret what, I, what I've done. Like if, if my mom and my dad didn't like do that to me, like mm -hmm. didn't let me go out and stuff when I was a kid, I wouldn't have been like what I like now. So now we understand where you Now where I understand. I was, uh, when I was a kid, trust me, I was, I was like really bad. Like I was, why you don't love me, you don't want me to go out. But, but when I think it now, they, they have the whole right. And it was definitely, you know, the, the decision to go on training every day, like you mentioned, just taking a day rest. And it, it's a tough decision to have a, a child as a, Yeah, as a, kid, as a kid to have this decision. Like for me, it wasn't, it, wasn't, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a decision. It was like, just like that's something that I have to do. You know, yes. like I have to play tennis. So at the beginning you were forced. No, I wasn't forced. You I love the game, but you're forced to have this, you know, um, significant amount of training sessions, or um, or you enjoyed it. So. F the first, the first, left, like the first three years, they were fun. I was, I was having fun. You, you were enjoying. No one, it. no one was forcing me. Like that's yes. the best thing about m my family. Like they don't, they don't actually force me. Because yes. if they force me, I'll be like in my home now doing nothing. Mm -hmm. Like but by, by the age of 16, I'll be like, okay, I'm, I'm yes. not going to play anymore. Which, ha which happens. With which a lot happens of with a lot of players, like especially Egyptian especially players. Egyptian and players. <laughs> And uh, yeah, in the Middle East, but especially Egyptian players. Um, and yeah, like the first years, I was I was playing it for fun. I I loved the game because um, I wasn't like my parents wasn't like you're gonna play tennis. My sister was playing tennis, so I was like, okay, she's having fun. Why not me start playing? And usually, the second child is easier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it turned out to be like me. I I have the talent, but my sister, she 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 had she was talented, but she decided not to like not she to was yeah she decided not to like to start the fight you know start yeah. the the journey and um, yeah so <laughs> so it's definitely 